Rabies is a very rare disease in the U.S., which is fortunate because it's extremely deadly. In fact, once you show symptoms, it's essentially 100% fatal, with the exception of only a few case studies. And rabies is not endemic in humans. It's transmitted to humans from animals, either dogs, hence the term rabid dog, or bats, or some other animal. And actually, there are a lot of animals that can carry rabies, which should strike you as strange, because usually viruses are optimized for one particular species. Now, the reason rabies is different is that it's actually caused by a number of different viruses, not just one. But all of these viruses are in the Lissa virus genus within the rhabdovirus family. Now, the way infection works is that when a dog or a bat or some other animal bites you, the rabies virus infects your muscle cells, replicates there, and then gets into sensory and motor nerves and travels by retrograde axonal transport to the spinal cord, where it jumps across synapses into the next neurons and then travels up to the brain. Now, easily said, but this can take a long time, and the incubation period can last from a week to as long as a year. And it depends in part on where you get bitten. The closer the bite is to the brain, like a bite on the face compared to the foot, the quicker it can get to the CNS because axonal transport takes time. Now this long incubation period is important to note because it's a time when we can intervene with vaccination, which we'll talk about soon, whereas once symptoms start, it's too late, the patient will die. Now once in the brain, the virus infects neurons. And if you were to look at some infected brain tissue under a microscope, you might see negri bodies, which are eosinophilic aggregates of viral proteins in the cell that clump together. So that's how it gets to the brain, but actually once the virus starts replicating in the brain, it can now spread outwards again, along nerves to the eyes, salivary glands, skin, and so on. And this most likely happens in animals as well, which would explain why dogs and bats can infect you by biting you, because the virus came back out of the brain into salivary glands. So how does rabies look clinically? Well, first you have a prodromal phase with flu-like symptoms, nausea, vomiting, and then only after that do you get encephalitis with fever, agitation, hydrophobia, meaning fear of water, pharyngeal spasms, coma, flaccid paralysis, seizures, respiratory and vascular collapse, a lot of things clearly. The upshot is nearly everybody dies and quickly too. And that's why I told you about negri bodies, because you might conceivably have someone come in with all of these symptoms and die before you can make a diagnosis, and then do a brain biopsy post-mortem to see what happened. But either way, even if you had diagnosed the person while alive, there's no meaningful treatment to speak of.